Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I achieve the composition, the outline and the underdrawing of this painting of a stag. Be sure to watch it right through to the end because here and there I'll be slowing it down so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, what we'll do now is attempt to actually break this down, how I achieved this composition. Right, so what I'm going to do on this right hand side here is just take all the eyes off, that's it, and then that's the start of the actual image I got from uh, Unsplash, uh, Diane Park House. I'll put all the uh, the references to the photographers and where they're from because it's all royalty free but I'm just giving them credit for the photography so what I did I cut it out which gave me this and I cut it out with this rubber tool here it's just it's just a big rubber just to just to show you there look so basically you're just rubbing it out the background around it uh, this is just a very sort of basic description of what I did so then I had the background flipped the actual image so I wanted it that way to go into into the scene rather than that way I mean that's blown up a little bit but it's uh, you get a midgest so then what I did then is I popped the actual cutout there onto it but it looks like a cutout you see so I wanted to make it sort of mistier because eventually I want to do that, put all the snowflakes going over it and make it sort of really misty picture. So what I did then was, if I just close all these off, I made a, you can hardly just see it there, but it's just a, a gradient tool, which I, if I just click onto it here, let's see if it comes up there. If you look at bottom of here, look, I just put greys in. At some point, I probably will bring out a video explaining how I do these things in detail. Um, but I just made a gradient there. So when I put the gradient on, it made it look misty look. So it created more of an atmosphere, got rid of all these really sharp colours. Um, so I made it quite mistier. And then when you pop your idea on that that looks too stark now so what I did with that I actually uh, if we just do this you can see the difference there I just actually made the opacity less if you're looking over here it's 85% see like the actual image behind it I'll, I'll draw in the fur the coat as it should be uh, but it gives you that's the only way I could do it really to make it look right so you have to play with these programs but that's what it look I mean it still looks like a little bit of a cutout here at the moment because it is basically but when I've softened these edges up when I've when I draw it and I put all those snowflakes down like what this looks like so what I like about this composition is that it's got like a path running down here which draws the eye down towards the the uh, stag then you've got this direction here of the leaves and this direction of the leaves and branches here look it all brings the eye to the stag the next one i do i'll try and do it from the very start record it as i'm doing it and that would be probably more helpful then um, but that's just a rough idea what i did right so first of all then i'm just marking my center point on my board and then i've got a center point on my reference image now I decided to do the outline as the cross-reference method just for the ease of it. I'm just going to spend a little time now just explaining how I do that. Basically you've got a ruler across here which is marked up to 16 inch and then you've got 12 inch which is actually the scale of the painting I'm going to be doing. You've got the cursor which you can see moving around here so say well where I started really was just just above the nose there on that corner there so if I place the cursor onto that point there you'll see at the top here there's a dashed line and that gives you the actual area on the width and if you look on the, the side here you've got the depth 
you can see it's got dotted lines again so it's just a case of observing the ruler and that is 11 and 3 quarters by 5 and a quarter so then if I mark that on my board as a point then that's my point of reference and then it's just a case of going around measuring certain areas and doing the same thing just marking it on the board using a ruler what I tend to do is do certain points and then just freehand it and then I don't do it then I just use my eye to check. So that was a quick recap but mainly I do freehand most of my paintings I do on YouTube is freehand but for this one I just thought it'd be easier just to do this cross reference just to save a bit of time and it gives you an idea of an alternative way if you like a more in-depth look at how I do the outline totally freehand there's loads of videos on my channel there's actually a playlist full of videos explaining how I do it some of them are actually real time so I'll just shine that up on the actual screen now for you and I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out if you wish so like I mentioned in the recap it's just putting them odd marks in cross-reference and then using freehand now the surface I'm using is a pastel matte dark grey and the pencil I'm using is a 708 Carbothella pencil which is an ideal colour really for this it's just slightly darker than the actual grey pastel matte but it rubs out really well and the razor I'm using is a Faber-Castell kneadable eraser now with this method you've got to be patient with it because it's you know it's like you, you're actually thinking a lot about things rather than just letting go and flowing with it like when you do freehand so it does go against the grain a little bit make sure you focus on your heart as well so open your heart while you're doing it because you, you tend to go in your mind a lot here when you're doing this because it's quite mechanical so always sort of you know have a minute and just sort of connect to your heart again and connect to the feeling of the the stag and try and draw that in while you're doing the freehand and then just go back into the mechanical of measuring it and then go back into that feeling of uh, one with the subject so you're getting sort of you're still getting that feeling in the drawing if you like because that's so important to get even at this stage the sense and energy of the subject you're doing and keep the marks quite loose you notice I'm keeping the grip on the pencil quite away from the uh, point of the pencil uh, it's not too close to it just trying to keep everything nice and loose if you're enjoying this video why not subscribe it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos now as well as the outline I'm just putting a few marks where the shadows are in that and then going into the background just using the cross-reference method again just just odd places just to give me an idea then just freehand it to get a feel for the background and put that in very roughly even at this stage to create that oneness I'm still keeping a connection to the stag so making sure that these marks feed into that area of the painting now onto the underdrawing these are the pencils I'll be using Just mixing the colours using burnt sienna, yellow ochre, blue and brown and white now do what I normally do which is putting the white down and then glaze over the top and now for the shadow areas I'm using brown and blue which creates greys before I continued with that I decided to put a little bit of white just behind the actual stag there just to give me an idea of the actual shape of it just to sort of give it a little bit of more definition uh, for me to work with and again just using that combination sort of dark brown yellow ochre white burnt sienna and a bit of blue and it's amazing what subtleties you can achieve with just those basic colors now with this underdrawing it's not all about getting the value right and the color right it's all about just getting the placement correct and the shapes right 
Turn it down here so you can see how I'm doing it. It's just using that Carbothello white just to smooth things over a little bit as well. But putting that brown down, maybe a bit of blue with it, and and just keeping loose and feeling that energy all the time connecting to the stag and also the background even though you haven't got the background in a moment you're still connecting to it on the reference image because everything needs to be one and if you can keep that connection from the very start it makes all the difference just like to take this opportunity to thank all my patreons for all their wonderful support every month i can't thank you enough it means so much to me if you're interested in considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check out the link in the description below for more details. This painting will be on, all the footage will be on there so you can see every mark I make and every colour pencil I use. The completed painting will be on my Patreon round about January, February time 2023. Now I love this stage because it gives you a chance to be really loose because we're not really interested in getting the value right and the chroma, it's all about getting the placement right and the feel. So you can really be loose and, and really connect to the subject. Now the colours are close to it but they're not exact, I mean I'll put all that in when I start doing the rich colours. This is the base coat really so when I start putting the rich colours on the rich colour stage which is the next video I'll be using all this texture I've put underneath here and that'll mix in with the richer colours. So my awareness is on getting the shape right, getting everything into the correct place, having that feeling right as well because even at this stage you can get the feeling in there. Now part two of this video I'll be focusing on getting the chroma right and the value right and the edges but at the moment it's just basic sort of preparation and that's why I love about it you don't got to be concerned at all about all that you can just be free throwing and just be expressive with what you're doing and this expression and this looseness and this freedom of feeling it adds to the next stage as well because you try and keep that sort of looseness while you're putting the details in. It all helps with the finished painting. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends. It would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow. Now the cross reference method is okay but it only gives you a rough idea because you can't get the exact measurement. It's so you, you know with, with the drawing you it could only be a slightly a millimetre out or whatever and it don't, don't look right. So you have to really keep a, a feeling that it's freehand where you're constantly checking and comparing against other shapes and not being frightened to move it even though you might have measured it that way it's how it seems to you when you look at it that's the most important thing is trusting your own eye there's a few things i do actually to check things are correct and that is to look into the mirror at the reflection of it so you're seeing it from a different angle it's a flip view of it and that brings out imperfections that might need changing or you could always take a photograph with your mobile phone and see what that looks like or take it into another room turn it upside down see how it looks there's all sorts of things you can do just to check just to check to make sure that it, it feels and looks right now when everything's filled in I'm double checking it just checking it like I would if it were freehand using the horizontal plane and also the vertical plane in places just to make sure everything's lined up um, just to be on the safe side because you, you never know you might have measured it wrong with the rule it's so easy to do because it gets so tedious doing it that method um, that it can easily just you know just slightly do it wrong so it's always a good idea to double check and make sure that everything's correct This last bit of the underdrawing, I'm just working out a few areas, just putting a bit of that richness in, ready for the rich colour stage. I don't normally put this in, but I thought I'd just have a play with it. 
So I'm just working in a bit of burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre in there, just to see how it feels, give me an idea of what to, to do on the next stage. Coming to the end of the underdrawing now, I'm just actually placing more attention to the actual nose, mouth and eyes because that's where the focal point is so I'm just paying more attention onto that just to finish off. But I hope you've enjoyed it, it's been an interesting one to do. Now if there's any pointers you need, any extra pointers, please leave a message in the description below this video. Um, it would be great to hear from you. Here's a look at the painting so far at a different angle. This is the angle I see when I'm actually drawing it from the computer reference. So it gives you an idea of what it looks like. So if you're interested in seeing any more of my work, please check out these links here. Take care, bye for now, and a merry, merry Christmas to you all. And thanks for your support, and thanks for watching my videos. I really appreciate it.